Hey guys, welcome back and thank you for watching. Uh, this video is going to be all about ballast and front axle loading. Uh, so this is, uh, I guess you can maybe call it a follow-up to a follow-up and an addendum at the same time. Uh, Messick's put out a video a couple of weeks back about front axle loading and then a follow-up relative to uh, rear ballast and the impact on front axle loading. Uh, so what I'm going to show you here today is some numbers specific to the GC1023E, the Massey, um, and I'll do a couple comparisons uh, related back to the uh, Kubota and Deer tractors shown in the Messick's video. So stick around. All right. Unfortunately, this is not going to uh, be an outside video where I'm in front of the tractor uh, because it is super windy today. And super noisy uh, so we're gonna have to switch over to uh, narration mode uh, here shortly and I'm gonna show you my spreadsheets and the results tables and a couple graphics uh, showing you what I found for the Massey but for everyone who doesn't want to jump around to the indexes and doesn't want to stick around and watch the whole thing here's the bottom line if you put about 350 pounds on the rear of your tractor on the three-point you're gonna take 280 or 90 pounds ish off the front axle there is a fulcrum effect neil confirmed it i confirmed it i welcome any debate in the comments but rear ballast on the three point does take load off the front axle we'll talk about ballast in the tires which doesn't take load off the front axle later uh, but yes i can confirm that and then the other thing I'm going to show and I'll confirm for you with numbers in this video is that it is super easy to overload these tractors. You've got a front axle spec, a rear axle, axle spec, and a total weight spec. And there's arguments about whether liquid ballast in the rear uh, counts toward total weight um, on, the on, the, on the tractor and or on the rear axle. And, you know, does front axle loading include the weight of the axle itself? Or is that just load on top of the axle? So you would need to subtract the weight of the axle and the wheels and the tires and the fluid, I guess, from that to get that loading. But we're kind of splitting hairs there if you go down to that level of detail. There is a certain level of uncertainty in these numbers. Uh, my total weight, for example, is off by about 150 pounds. I've, I'm not able to account for that, uh, and unfortunately, I don't have total uh, car scales to do all four wheels at the same time. Now, before I get started, let me talk a little bit about my methodology. Now, I don't mean to string you along. You can index forward if you want to skip this, but my methodology uh, was to measure one wheel at a time because I only have one 660-pound scale to do the measurement, so I would have to add the weight of two wheels to get the total weight on a particular axle, uh, which of course two measurements added together adds to the margin of error, of error but that is what it is. Um, to try to keep from sort of tipping the tractor, um, I put the other three wheels on a two by six, which was approximately the same thickness of the scale, to, so the tractor was essentially level for every measurement and I shifted things around as I went along. So that was my methodology. I unfortunately was not, not able to measure the rear axle with ballast. I had to calculate it um, later. Uh, so that's just because of the capacity of my scale. So that was my methodology. Now we're gonna switch over here and I'm gonna show you the screenshots and some spreadsheets and give you a little my, bit of my own thoughts. And here is the first measurement I made. Uh, a couple of notes about what you see here. I've noted that I'm full of diesel fuel at this point. I have rear liquid ballast in the tires. I'm estimating at 160 pounds, 10 gallons per tire. Uh, I did measure the weight of the bucket and confirmed that. I did not measure the weight of the loader standalone uh, because I don't have a hanging scale. So that's that number you see there is a spec sheet number. And what I'm coming up here with is a 56-44 split as far as weight distribution. Now, if you back the 160 pounds of liquid out of that equation, you basically have an exact 60-40 split 
with 60% of the weight being up front and 40 in the rear on a stock bear tractor, just as Neil mentioned in his video. So how does this compare to the axle specifications? Well, the Massey is spec'd for the front axle at a max capacity of 1940 pounds and the rear axle at 2000 pounds. 94 pounds so maximum tractor weight of 2690 pounds so we're not approaching those limits yet but obviously we don't have a load in the bucket now comparing these numbers to the numbers from neil's video which you can see noted earlier in this video or, and i also have links in the description his video is outstanding uh, you can see that the front axle loading on the massey is slightly lower than what Neil had in his video. And I, I think some of that has to do with, on the Kubota side, the fact that the Kubota loader arms are a curved boom design. So that bucket sits much further out front of the tractor. And in the case of the 1025R, the loader and the bucket weigh in a lot heavier, I think closer to 500 pounds. Uh, versus the Massey. So you've got that weight up front on the 1025R that's changing its weight distribution slightly. Now the next measurement I made was with the box blade on the back. So that weighs in per the spec sheet at 315 pounds. It's a very difficult thing to weigh as well because of the balance on it. So I took the spec sheet at face value even though my shipping slip said 305 pounds. So with that, and again, keep in mind I have the QH05 on, which pushes that implement even further back, uh, which further increases the fulcrum effect that is uh, present. Uh, we now only have 943 pounds on the front axle. So that's a reduction of 292 pounds, which is a very interesting number. That's almost a one for one pound per pound reduction in front axle weight. So that's a, that's a good bang for your buck right there. And here we have the final measurement, which is with a rear ballast box attached. Uh, you'll note in the photo, the front wheels are elevated. I took the photo just prior to making the measurement. Um, so that ballast box with the contents of the box weighs in around 360 pounds. So that means I only, in this scenario, have 917 pounds on the front axle. So that's a weight reduction of 318 pounds off of the front axle. So what does that mean? That means, and this gets back to my earlier comment, that means that we're right in that sweet spot, that 350-ish pound sweet spot where you're getting about a pound per pound reduction of front axle loading with rear three-point ballast. So what does this all mean? These are just numbers, maybe, or maybe it means something. Here's what I think. I think that these numbers show that you can max out the total weight capacity of your tractor very easily. And keep in mind, my measurements were done without an operator in the seat, okay? I did do on seat and off seat at times and the vast majority of the operator's weight is on the rear axle it was maybe you know 20 percent of my weight appeared on the front axle uh 20 yeah about 25 percent of my weight maybe appeared on the front axle so very very easy to max these out i mean you think about it with my numbers and i'll put it up on the screen here you put just one rear implement on and you have an empty bucket and you're sitting in the seat and look how close you are to, to, to the total max weight capacity of the tractor. So that's something to keep in mind. Number two, it looks like there's a sweet spot on ballasting, rear ballasting, not liquid tire fill, but rear ballasting of around 350 pounds. Um, and I'd say that maybe generically, whether it's an implement sticking out further or a ballast box, uh, of course, the implement sticking out is going to give you a little more balance uh, and uh, the fulcrum effect is going to be more effective because it sticks out further in the rear. And 
it's going to be better as far as costing you less relative to rear axle loading. So you're gonna kind of get that relief off the front axle without burdening the rear axle if you use a rear implement that sticks out further. Of course, operationally, that's tough sometimes because you're working in tight spaces and you don't always want that box blade sticking out and you don't want that box blade digging into the ground as you're backing up if there's hills or, or you know, some kind of stumps on uneven uh, terrain. A lot of times it's much better to have that short ballast box or concrete block or whatever you've made uh, for rear ballast. But 350 pounds, I think, looks like a pretty sweet spot to be operating in. I've seen some guys do like 600 pound blocks. Your rear axle, your rear uh, three point will lift it, but you got to look at total weight, I think, right? And this isn't a one-time deal. This isn't like, well, I exceeded the total axle capacity uh, this afternoon, so now I broke my tractor. No, this is longevity. That's what this is all about. If you exceed the total weight capacity of your tractor once or twice or three or 10 or 15 different days, times, are you going to break something? Probably not. Um, but the more often, obviously, you do that, the more often you're going to wear things out. You're going to wear out your front axle seals. You're going to wear out, well, I've seen people not torque their lugs down and then break the rims off. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen. So that's something to keep in mind. And then the last thing I'll talk about here is this liquid ballast in the rear tires. I've seen posts online where guys have said, well, I can't lift with my front end uh, because I don't have any ballast. Or now that I have ballast, I can lift so much more with my loader. And... Taken literally, that is a completely false statement. Your loader lift capacity is what it is. I think the, the correct way of saying that is you can more safely lift with your front end if you have ballast on the rear or in the tires because it's going to keep your rear end planted, right? I mean, you can lift a lot with the front and maybe even ride along with the rear tires kind of tipping off the ground and sort of gently you know babying the tractor along and get the job done that's not safe right you hit one little dip with the front tire you're done so rear ballast whether it's on the three point or in the tires all that you're doing is planting the front the rear end on the ground more firmly if with the liquid ballast than the tires and that's good because it's kind of no sort of no cost to total weight um, or with the fulcrum effect of the three-point ballast, you're taking weight and load and stress and wear off the front axle. All right, so thank you for watching. I appreciate you sticking in here to the end. If you liked this video, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Like the videos, hit the like button as well. I'd appreciate that. And uh, stick around. I've got some other videos coming up in uh, the future that I think you'll find interesting. So take care.